Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, we are going to continue the topic of piano basics. Um, and today I am going to talk about how to start learning a new piece. Um, and of course, this might be uh, more beneficial for early advanced or intermediate level uh, students, not as much for professional musicians or already conservatory or music school students. But I think towards the end of the video, you will still learn a great deal or learn from my mistakes uh, on how to start a new piece. Um, and let me just give you this scenario. You're teaching a seven year old who just started learning piano last year. Uh, the key in this new sonatina is in G major. Uh, I bet for many times when you stop the students, you will say F sharp. Don't forget the F sharp, right? Because most of the students, we still teach them with C major or the white keys. So they thought the F sharps or B flats, they're additions. Sometimes they forget and that's okay. Um, and how to avoid that or how do we make sure the students learns all the sharps or flats in the key signature at the very beginning? Um, we always joke about how pianist is not responsible for uh, when the instrument is out of tune, right? You have someone to blame, the, the piano technician. But I have this theory of how when you are playing a piece in certain keys, for instance, in E major, then your ear should be already soaked inside of this key. So if I learn an E major piece, the first thing I do before I even read the first note is to... to set my ears into this key. Now, if I'm reading this, I play a C natural. The C natural really sounds out of the place, right? Again, this whole idea of tonal music, you have tonic, dominant, you have leading tone, all of this is really to have a hierarchy of, of notes so that this will sound very foreign, right? It doesn't belong to E major. So, of course, if that happened, then the student will notice something is wrong, something sounds harsh. Then they will, oh, that sounds better, right? So they will fix it, okay? Um, the same thing goes with time signatures too, uh, whether it's duple meter or triple meter or sometimes compound meter, right? When you six, eight, right? One, two, three, two, two, three. So when you already set yourself into this key, time signature, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then if suddenly you played a fourth beat, then it sounds wrong, yeah? So by, by learning it this way, or by preparing this, it this way, uh, you will actually reduce a lot of mistakes, okay? The same thing goes with form. And of course, the form, uh, in order to understand it, the student has to be probably a little bit older. Um, so if it's a rondo form, you know it's A, B, A, C, A, D, the A always comes back, right? If it's a variation form, then you know there is a theme, right? Every single variation is really an embellishment around the theme or a sonata form or binary, ternary. Why do we know these? because this will help us to later memorize the piece, right? Um, when we play a piece memorized, then we, we have to know, oh, we're in this section, the next one is in the, the next section, almost like a experienced driver, yeah? It knows after I exit from here, I get onto another highway, and then what exit, I go to another road. So then there is a map in, in the head, but you need to prepare this from early on, okay? Um, the next part I want to look at the music, and this is of course before I play, is to see where are 
the most loud, the loudest part, or fortissimo, or fortissimo, or where is the softest part? Yeah, pianissimo, or pianissimo. Um, and why do we want to know that? Um, in other tutorials, I've shared my understanding of dynamics. Dynamics really is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to reflecting what the, what is the true intention of the composers. Uh, when Chopin felt depressed, he might put piano. When he felt serene or peaceful, he might put piano. When he felt uh, religious, right, he might put piano. When he felt mysterious, yeah, like that, he might put piano. Then, when we look at backward, we see piano. Then we think softer. That's not the whole picture, right? We have to try our best to make a decision on what one of these many emotions that all can occur under piano, what really this means. But sometimes the most forte, the loudest part and the softest part really means that it's some kind of a peak of emotion. Uh, then when we know them, it helps us to better learn this later. Okay, I can here share with you a true story that happened to me. Uh, this was when I was a college uh, student. I was learning the 30th Sonata by Beethoven. Uh, Opus 109, one of really my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite late sonatas and one of my favorite overall. Um, it's in E major, it starts like this. Yeah. And this theme happened again around major 48. Uh, and this, what's significant about this, this comeback is that Beethoven prepared a huge crescendo in the early 20th, you know, 21st or 22nd uh, measure. So it was really almost a 30 measures long crescendo. So naturally when I get here, I wanted this to be triumphant, right? To be the most. I played fortissimo. I didn't realize at the time, it was only marked forte. And there is one place that has fortissimo, that is around measure 60 something, 62. After it. That is a C major part. Um, and that C major part in E major really sounds out of the place. But that's the Beethoven's true intention. That's the climax of that moment, the movement. Yeah, that C major part. But it took me really probably a couple of months to realize it. Yeah, so, so then after knowing that, I have to really redesign the whole thing. Uh, but I could have avoided these uh, detours that I made by just simply look at the piece before I start for a minute to know that's the fortissimo, okay? Um, the same thing goes with highest note and lowest note. And, you know, we have to learn this from singers that, you know, the first thing they do, I bet, is to see the highest note and lowest note so that they know they are able to sing it, right? Or maybe they have to find a piece in a lower key. Um, but we don't do that enough. Higher note, forte, lower note, or pianissimo, it's too easy for us. But if we have a better plan before we start, that would be much more helpful. Um, and this suggestion also, this is for intermediate to early, early advanced level uh, students. Um, usually what happens in a piece when we make mistakes is the sections that has accidentals, right? And I'm sure everybody was corrected by their teachers Oh, the F sharp or the F natural last until the end of the measure, right? Why? Because the, the harmony usually lasts a little longer, right? The harmony doesn't just go for a 16th note and then you change the measure. It's very rare. 
in most of the repertoires. So it lasts a little longer than the whole measure uh, you have this accidental. But study those measures first. You can know them better uh, before you start the whole piece. Um, and then the last su suggestion I give, um, and this is from uh, Miss Chu, Miss Nalita Chu, uh, my uh, uh, teacher at Eastman. Um, she told me that uh, she has tried this once and it works for her. Um, when you learn a relatively long piece, what happens is you go from the beginning and then you, you learn middle section and then the end. So what, ha what ended up happening is that you learn the beginning of the piece much better. Right? The same thing with playing scales. Uh, I don't know if you ever wonder why the students always make mistakes when they're going down, not when they're going up. Why? Because they, I guess, statistically, they play the, the first couple of octaves more. Right? When you make mistake, you go from the beginning and then end it up the beginning, you practice more. Same thing goes with learning a piece. Yeah? So if you, for instance, learn from the coda, and then go to the middle section, and then go to the, to the, the opening, then when you're on stage, especially when you perform a piece by memory for the first time in front of a large audience, which really takes guts to do, um, you want to be more and more comfortable, not less and less comfortable. Yeah, so I tried that when I was learning Chopin's third ballad and second ballad, and it worked, right? I get more and more confident because I started learning the coda. I, I learned this first. Yeah, so when I get here, almost like I'm getting closer and closer to the safe zone. Okay, so, and of course, if, if a piece only has 20 measures, it's, it's not a big deal, but if it's as long as a third ballad and you can divide them into four or five different sections, uh, I really suggest everyone to, to give that a try and see how it goes for the first time you perform by memory in front of audience. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I hope next week I will give you another new topic in, in terms of the basics of piano play. See you next week.